You're about to see how I stitch this lovely goldfinch on a teasel. I hope you like it and I hope you keep watching to the end because I'm going to show you what I'm on with this weekend. And it's not a bird, it's something for me to wear. Enjoy the video. See you later. Today I'm going to be stitching a goldfinch. I've got my supplies together and I've hooped up already and what I've put in is the grey flannel that I used actually to make the lichens on the page for the wren. I thought it would look like a wintry sky when we get those leaden grey skies in the UK and so that's why I've chosen the grey flannel. I've got a bit of red off the linen dress I made last year, some white off white cotton off an old tablecloth. I've got a bit of cotton that got marked and I thought the actual actually the mark was a good colour. This bit of cotton that's a good tan colour and brown. This is a bit of 1960s uh, fabric and it's the only bit I've got with a bit of acid yellow on it. I might only need that little corner. And then while I was getting everything I came across this which is just a bit of a bit of old canvas but it just made me think that it would work well for the teasel. I can fray the edge or no, I'm not quite sure at the moment but it felt like that could be a good teasel. So I've got that, my threads, my tangle, my scissors and needle oh, my cup of tea obviously. Can't do without the cup of tea. Um, the thread jar for all the threads. I'm set up and ready to go. Well, I had a picture of a teasel which I sort of cut out and tried to decide how I was going to do it. And I've come up with a background of the marked cotton and then a middle bit out of the brown cotton. And then I cut a piece of the canvas and it has taken me a while to just work out how to do it. And well, in the end, I've gone with my little scissors and I've snipped either the warp or the weft, whichever one I thought, until I could get the shape of it with, and leave all of them hanging, which I think I can manipulate once they're in. And so I'm going to put that on top of there. And all of a sudden, I thought, why don't I use some garden string? because it's got that texture that I feel that would be good for the teasel. So I don't know how this is going to work, but I have cut a length and now I, and I've unplied it, threaded it in a decent thing. And I am going to see just if this will work. I'm just going to come up anywhere and start, I think. If the string will pull through, that's the main thing. I need a bigger needle. Well, I had to go back to the drawing board because I couldn't use the string in my needle. It just shredded too much. But I really like the texture of it. So my new plan is to shred it up on purpose, like that, and couch it down and then, and then amend it or cut it or give it a haircut right at the end because I actually really like the string. I think it's just perfect for the teaser. So I'm just going to carry on shredding this bit of string. I mean, look at that, that's just perfect for teaser. So I'm just going to keep, I don't need to do loads of it, but I definitely, I definitely like it. So it's going on. So I'll shred another bit. It's just making it a bit messy, but I think it's going to be worth it at the end. I'm just going to dot around, couching the string on. I don't need to totally cover the canvas, because that's part of it as well. But I don't want the string to be able to come off, so I just keep couching it down. You never know what you can do, even the knotty bits. I think the knotty bits are going to look particularly good. Just going to, and I've got... I've just got a couple of strands out of my tangle that are just quite the same sort of a colour so that it's just going to melt into the background a bit. I do love texture on things. Mm. 
Maybe I didn't need the canvas. Well, I'll just carry on doing this and then see how it comes out. I've finished stitching the garden twine on. Really like the texture that it's given me. And you can still see the underlying canvas, which I think is really nice. So I've just done straight stitches in a golden colour and then a two colours of brown. And I'm just going to trim the outline of the teasel. So all this I could have could be using again, I suppose. I do love it when textures involved in the embroidery. I don't think that's half bad at all. See the canvas, the pieces of canvas are showing through now that I've taken the excess string off. But that string, it's done, a, it's done an absolute wonder. I love it. I'm back to one of my ribbon embroidery techniques. I do have this ivory ribbon. So I'm going to use that and paint it down once I've got it embroidered. Now I'm just going to twizzle the ribbon around and around until I've got a nice tubular looking piece. Of once I've got it tight enough, I'm going to go back down through my base fabric and then just hold that curve in because I'm going to couch it all down at the end. I just need it to go in the right place. Come up and do another one. Oh, there's another another bit of twiddle till I can get my till I can get the ribbon going the way that I want it to go. And I think I want to go down there. And I'm leaving it loose enough so that I can couch down. But I'll lay all of the ribbon in first. I'm just coming to the end of couching down my ribbons. I've just got a single strand in my needle of a creamy cotton. And the way I'm doing it is I'm just going to hold the ribbon where I want it to be. And then I'm following the direction of the twist so that my stitches get camouflaged into the twist of the ribbon. But if I can come up there and the twist of the ribbon is going this way I'm going to put quite a long stitch in that will either sink into the twist but if it's on top it'll just not look very obvious and I'm just coming down the whole thing holding it where I want it to be and I don't need that many stitches in I just need to be able to let the ribbon go in the manner I would like it. I don't know whether you can see the twist going there but I'm following the twist of the ribbon. But I'm not actually stitching through the ribbon at all. I am just couching it. I'm just amending the colour so that it looks more natural and it's amazing how the paint doesn't really go into the background fabric as long as you're not putting too much on it just sinks into what you're painting and I'm just going to amend those because they're just far too bright it's definitely easier to paint after it's stitched because then you can put the shading where you want and just sort of is it supposed to be you know they're going over aren't they I'm starting to put the bird on. I've cut the main body shape out of this bit of white linen and I'm using a silver grey, just one strand and I'm just going to put it on with long stitches. I always like to get the shapes on first and then I can do my stitching on top. I still sort of think about the way the bird is as I'm putting the tucking stitches on. The, the rump and the tail and then I'm just going to I've got my piece of red linen on for the face 
and I've just found a piece of red silk in the tangle and I'm just going to gently tack it down starting the stitches I don't think I'm going to need that many red on here because the colour's just about perfect so these few stitches are probably probably all I'll need and I've just put the black thread that black thread there is just indicating to me where the eye is going to put some straight stitches just over onto the white so you can see how the feathers go into one another I don't feel I'll need more red on here eventually I was looking at the American goldfinches which are a heck of a lot more yellow than our little ones in the UK it's amazing how the same name is for totally different birds there was a comment about the robin saying that the robin didn't look like the robin in the Midwest. Well, they're two different birds entirely. Our little robin redbreast is a little garden bird. And your, uh, the robin redbreast in America is a, a thrush, or part of the thrush family. It's not, the, it's not even the same species of bird. But when I looked them up, they're so much more red. So they'd make a lovely study. Obviously, I don't see those ones in my garden. I just see our little robins in my garden. Right, I think I'll just leave that red hanging in case I need it and put the rest of the body on. I think sort of there somewhere. I'm carrying on with these little beigey straight stitches because the colour just goes right round under his chin. And I think just a few stitches will actually indicate that really nicely. Sort of just peter them out and then go back along. Always easier to go along with a, a few stitches and then come back to thicken it up. So I, I think so because it means you don't overdo it. And if you do run out of thread, considering I'm always using up tail ends quite often, if you do run out of thread, another thread that's not quite the same will just sort of meld into the rest and not make a hard line. quite like these long stitches. got some long feathery stitches. I think I'm going to be putting some white on top of here as well. I've got a single strand of black and I'm just putting the markings in here and I'm trying not to make it too feathery because they're quite well defined lines on a goldfinch, they're properly demarcated. I'm just going back up to thicken that, that little collar that he has and I'll go right up the back of his head again. A little bit of a black cap coming up. I think that's as far as I can do there without his eye being in. Bring my needle up and leave it hanging again. So I need his yellow bit of wing, which I did cut out a piece, but and I need quite a lot of black. I'm not sure whether to cut out a piece of material or do it all with thread. Well, I've got three strands of black in my needle and three strands is unusual for me because I like uh, stitching with just one but I can't just find a suitable piece of black material and so I am doing all the black with thread and I'm just going to cover in all of this that I know has to be black and all of a sudden he is going to look more goldfinch-like. I'm definitely laying in stitches of different lengths and keeping them in the way of the feathers. And so I'll just use longish stitches. I'm preparing for the eye by just back stitching with tiny back stitches around where the eye will be. I'm 
need some here as well. Well, my black bead was too big again, so I'm back to the purpley green ones that I used before. That one's the right size. I want to put it on with a couple of stitches right through it. So there's his eye in. Now I just need to set it into his head so it doesn't just look like a, it's been plonked on top. I'll carry on with my single strand of black and quite a bit of black round here actually for being called a goldfinch there's not actually much on the yellow on them is there i suppose it's all on their wings which when they're unfolded do look very goldy i actually looked for an image with a with the spread wings but then I, th I thought that it was just too big to put onto a page i would have been working so tiny I think I'd better go and cut the beak before I go any further. I've just cut out his beak from that piece of marked old linen. And so now I can stitch down onto the beak with the black thread and make it look like it's actually coming out of his face. little bit under here for shading and then the main black is actually around his beak and his eye. I'm just putting in his black eyebrow and a few extra stitches along here and then I think his face will be done. It's got a little bit of a black tip on his beak and take it right down to the tip. I've got silver grey back in my needle. I've laid in a f one or two shading stitches on his beak and a separation for his upper and lower beak. And now the silver grey is just going to work through here and shade his tummy. Work my way right down. So here's some nice feathery little feathery white grey tufts go up onto the up over his black bits and up over his shoulders I'm going to put those on now I've just got a little piece of yellow pearl cotton in my needle and I just I need this piece of material to be caught down but I don't really need to do much with it so I'm just going to put a single strand going right up to separate the feathers out and then another one there and I think that's all I need to do with the yellow but it really is just a small amount almost done just his legs to go I want some of that in front of his feet he needs to be in among the teasel, not just on top. I think I'll just tease some of those pieces on top. And I'm just going to put in a suggestion of his toes. This is sort of what I'd call a dirty pink. I'm not going to do the whole thing in one go because I want it I definitely want it to look like he's in the teasel and not on top of it. I need some of the teasel to be coming up around him. I think I'm going to leave it at that with the pink and lay some black in. Well my goldfinch page is now finished. I'll take you in for a little closer look. I did put some black on his legs but not very much, just enough to show that they're in among the teasel. And I think my favourite bit is the teasel. I just love how the garden string has made so much texture. 
and the ribbon sepals look really good too. But I'm happy to say that my goldfinch page is now done. And I think it's a lovely addition to the bird book. Well, I really, really enjoyed making this goldfinch. And for me, one of the best bits is getting that texture on the teasel. Um, the garden string just came into my mind and although it wouldn't work threaded through the needle because it was just shredding, it was that act of shredding that gave me the idea to couch it down. And so I wish you could feel it because it's just got such a good texture and it just looks like a teasel. Well, it does to me anyway. So I hope you really like that. Um, I'm about to... As soon as I've got this video edited anyway, I'm about to cut out my linen coat. This was one of the projects that people voted on earlier in the year. It's not actually that long ago really because my channel's only been going since June. Um, but this linen coat, I got the linen in March of this year and I've been wanting to make the coat since then and I am just about ready to do it. I've actually... I've actually already cut out the pattern in Swedish tracing paper which is something that you can actually stitch or and pin together and try on. So I've tried on half of the pattern to make sure that it fits me in the size I've chosen and I do need to do a bust adjustment on it because I'm a bit curvy and so I know that that fits me and I just need to do that little adjustment but after that I'm ready for cutting out and so this beautiful chartreuse stone washed linen is going to become a coat that's going to get all stitched by hand so I would expect to see uh, little bits coming into my videos of how far I'm getting along with it but it's very exciting to think that it's going to be cut out this weekend. Other than that, I would just like to say thank you very much for watching, for subscribing, for liking, for sharing or however you're supporting me by uh, watching what I'm doing and hopefully you're enjoying what's happening with the bird book. There really is just another couple of pages to go and then the front and back covers but I think there's three pages to go. Uh, but I know what they're going to be. I think I know. I think I know what they're going to be. Um, there's the next one is planned. The next two are planned anyway. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Happy stitching and bye from Marion's World. Bye.